Juana, so they, they are going all O line heavy. Napoleon's not messing around. Whoa, Ben Ajelana to the Colts. Nope, he's he's definitely protecting Peyton Manning. <laughs> um, Can't argue with that. Wait for a text here from uh, our buddy Josh Buchanan. Yeah, now we interested to see. So, Ben Ajelana, the first non-FBS player off the board in this draft. And it's a player that, you know, stonewalled Muhammad Wilkerson, who got picked in the first round. Uh, we have Josh already tweeting about it, so... Uh, I think they can move him into guard and have him and Costanzo next to each other, reminiscent of the 49ers last year and what they did. Well, I guess Pulling season needs to get after it. Yeah, and, and you know that's that's a strategy. You know, in the NFL draft they call it flooding. If you got a hole, you just take two or three, and one way or another, it's going to be addressed. You might not hit on them all, but you're going to. Hit on one or two, and it's going to be addressed. Right. If you, if you, you know, we saw, we saw the Philadelphia Eagles do it that one year with uh, Lino Shepard, Shelton Brown. We saw it last year the Buccaneers do it with Jerome McCoy, Brian Price. And, you know. So Chargers are on the clock. They still need a pass rusher here, Scott. Martez Wilson's still on the board. Could that be a natural fit? Yeah, I think so. I think I might have even had that in my mock draft. Yeah. Justin, um, Houston, Justin Houston's an interesting situation, so it'll be interesting to see how far he falls because I think without the field drug test, he's off the board right now. So. Right. So, yeah, I don't know if the Chargers will take the shot at him. I, I, I think he's going to fall a little bit more. And, you know, if a guy like Marvin Austin's falling, Houston's falling, Ballard's obviously still going to fall uh, maybe another round. Teams are, uh, Ballard's still falling. Teams are valuing this character. They're, they are. You can't say they're not. I'm interested to see what, what the Colts' plans are for Ajelana. Do they want? Are they going to play him at right tackle? Are they going to play him at guard? Yeah. I mean, they talked about moving Charlie Johnson into guard um, yesterday when at the press conference, so it'll be interested to and, see. Uh, uh, and cause there's room that me move a Johnson into guard and then put, uh, you know, Ryan Deem has dropped off a little bit, so. Josh Buchanan, uh, just give you his commentary, said that he didn't doesn't feel the Colts needed to move up for Ajelana, that, uh, that they kind of wasted the pick by making that trade, but he, but um, without the hernia, that Agilano, and if he were 6'6", Agilano would have been a first-round pick, so it was a good pick by the Colts. It's not a good trade. All right, here comes the Chargers pick. We'll see if they do go with that pass rusher, maybe wide out. The Natron Bomb. Yeah. He was a beast in Madden. <laughs> Intriguing. Marcus Gilchrist to the San Diego Chargers. What does that say about uh, Eric Weddle? Well, they list him as a corner. Step by I. But um, Gilchrist, one of those tweeners. You know, Eric Weddle may not stick around. I like Eric Weddle a lot. So do I. Yeah, he's a heck of a player. Updating my files here so mm -hmm. I can print these out at the end. So, so what do you think? I, you know, I like the fit because he is, you know, I think he's a tough kid. I'm not the biggest skill Chris fan. I, you know, I don't know if he um, can be a starter at the next level. I see him more as a nickel corner, maybe a rotational safety, but uh, maybe I'm off. Why don't you give your kind of thoughts on I think you've seen more of them than I have, Scott. Well, yeah, and we talked yesterday in the first round about maybe Prince Mukamara there. I, I right. think at the very least the Chargers need some depth, and Quentin Chambers getting up there in years. I think they need to start thinking about long term there. So, yeah, I like it. I mean, regardless of whether they're going to uh, – I mean, I, I guess I don't like it if they're planning to uh, let Weddle go. I think that's a pretty big drop-off. I like Weddle a lot, but – yeah, I think you, I think it's a corner though. I like it. All right. Well, the caddy's asking. That's who the Bucks taking here. Buccaneers pick is in. Uh, the first round they got Claiborne. Do they go D, D end heavy and uh, take another defensive end? I wouldn't fault them if they did. No, I, you know, I wouldn't fault them if they did. Maybe this is where we see one of these linebackers like Justin Houston. You know, Justin Houston probably play D end. Uh, Marcus Wilson. I, I think they do want that outside linebacker, but maybe. Um, I mean, maybe a little high for Mason Foster, but... Yeah, I think this would be better value and fit for the linebacker position for them in round, round three. Yeah. 
So, I have a corner. Uh, I keep the lead. Going to be off the team. I think Johnny Patrick would be a really nice fit for that system. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> because if, if a team, I keep a team, a keep to lead isn't in the picture. <laughs> I mean, granted, they did draft Byron Lewis last year in the third round, so I'm sure they are hopeful that he can get plugged in. But yeah. beyond those, that, then the cover's pretty darn bare. And that's, and obviously, Rodney Barber doesn't got a whole lot left in the tank. And, um,. Yeah, and how about an offensive tackle? Yeah, I mean they can always use your offensive line depth. I don't, I don't think they're in a bad well, position. Well, Blood's a free agent. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, and Ijelano just went. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why Indy moved up. You know, maybe that's what they were scared of. A Jaw Reed, someone like that. Um, I think there's no other offensive tackle really worth taking. Mark Gilbert. Uh, Mark yeah, Gilbert. Gilbert. Yeah. I think it might be a little high. Yeah, well, I think John Reed would be a little high, too, yeah? Yeah. I, I mean, I've heard some talk maybe round two for him, but... Yeah, both I of them, mean, I think, are more third-round picks. Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly wouldn't criticize if they went DN to get here. Yeah. They want Bowers still on the board. <laughs> or how about Alan Bailey? I, I think, uh, talking to Charlie from Pewter Report, yeah, I think he brought up Bowers, or, uh, Bailey's name as a possibility, so... Yeah. All right, well, let's see. Got here John Lynch. Nice. I'm going to say Bailey. All right. Uh, maybe I'll go Patrick. It's just a little different. Hey, there we go. There we go. Daquan Bowers goes to the Bucks. Um, I think I that's like why him. I had him in the first round. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, report. Give us some points. Report. Give us the points. Um, I want three more Howard Report. That probably <laughs> bumped me into the top three, I bet. There you go. So, Daquan Bowers go off the board. Uh, you like that pick after taking Claiborne? I do, because you did, now you, you already know you addressed it with Claiborne. You addressed your need. So, even if, if, if Bowers can't play this year or it doesn't work out, you kind of covered yourself. And if Bowers does work out, you just hit a home run. Getting both of them. Imagine that defensive line if all four of these players work out. Daquan Bowers, Adrian Claiborne playing the 2DM positions, Jared McCoy, and Brian Price. That's that's a two first round picks and two second round Seconds. picks on this defensive line in two yeah. years. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I mean, it, we talk about building through the trenches. Um, the Buccaneers are definitely going with that route with Raheem Morris. And see, uh, if the Buccaneers hadn't gotten Claiborne in the first round, I don't know if they, can go, they could have gotten Bowers here. Right, a little bit too risky. Yeah, because they, they would have had too much riding on them. And uh, apparently uh, Rick Spielman was asked about Bowers' injury after going to the press conference for, after the second-round pick, and he said, uh, I'm not going to mention anything about it, but you guys can figure out what's wrong with him. So something's, yeah, you know, so, something with that knee, obviously, I think we know that's not in a good condition. So it was a risky pick, but in the late second, your a near playoff team might be worth the shot. And maybe you just basically redshirt him. Maybe oh, yeah. They, they get it taken care of. Just, just have the surgery. Not playing this year. Have the you, surgery. Just do it. Rehab. Get healthy. Get your mind right. And you'll be ready for training camp 2012. All right. Well, you know, I like it. Yeah, if you go by name recognition, Rain Genius is saying Buck's doing well. Definitely. Uh, who will be better, Claiborne or Bowers? You know, I think if Bowers hits potential, I think he's definitely a little more solid player. I like Claiborne's fit, though. If you're making a bet, I think you're going to bet on Claiborne being better just because of the knee injury. But if Bowers works out, you get an eight to ten year sack a year guy. Um, uh, and you just can't emphasize enough because they cover themselves. That's what enabled them to do this. Yes, I agree. And that that seems to be Dominic's. Uh, that seems to be his mo here. So uh, let's move on. The Giants. They got about two minutes left on the clock. Uh, they definitely still need the offensive line and defensive line. They got Prince Mukamara with the. Uh, 19th pick. 19th pick, yeah. I mean, so pretty good value with that pick. So I still think I think they need some help in the trenches here. Defensive tackles are falling. Marvin Austin, Stephen Pio, we've mentioned for nearly every pick. There's a reason for that. But uh, see, that's the thing too. That I mean, the Giants are, are their philosophy. They want height, weight, speed guys. Right. They want guys that are big and fast. And I don't know if Pio fits that mold necessarily. Does Alan Bailey fit uh, that mold? They just got JPP. 
Bailey fits that mold, but uh, I mean, I, even Marvin Austin, I think he's kind of borderline. Yeah. Uh, Christian Ballard, I think, is interesting.